My name is Trevor Krieg. I am, you know, based out of the mid in the Midwest. I've been in the Salesforce ecospace for just under 15 years. And a uh, funny story, I never wanted to get into tech, but I always loved to do it as a pastime. I uh, started in sales right out of college. And uh, the company that I was working for at the time was uh, transitioning from their custom CRM to a Salesforce CRM. And they needed people that understood the sales aspect, but also um, the technical side. Uh, I raised my hand for that, you know, for that event and uh, got chosen with a few other people. They flew us out for some Salesforce certifications and I never looked back. <laughs> so I know that other people have found their way uh, into Salesforce and in different avenues, but just wanted to give you a little background about how I got into it. Um, and I think that just kind of leads us into how you can stand out as a Salesforce professional, uh, especially in this eco space right now. So a lot of people will have the discussion about certs or experience. I, if you listen to a podcast that I've been on before, I have one and only one cert and I take absolute pride in that. I have an admin cert, but I also have 15 years of experience. Uh, we can go down that road of, you know, finding the pros and cons of either, but you know, you play to your strengths, right? Uh, I'm an I'm not a great test taker, but I am very technically savvy and I can teach myself just about anything. So, you know, I tried to lean into that um, and I found a passion within Salesforce. So understanding, you know, where you are in within the Salesforce eco space and re really leaning into that. So again, this podcast will cover uh, kind of how we can stand out, how you can set yourself apart, some user stories about kind of how I got into the space, some challenges that I've had along the way. Um, and then at the end, we'll have kind of a, a Q&A as well. So technical skills. I am a huge believer in understanding the core aspects of Salesforce, but more importantly, how it's going to benefit you, but also the business. So again, certifications, I have an admin cert, but I also have a plethora of knowledge when it comes to development and app building. Um, so, you know, don't feel like you can ever put yourself aside for a new role or a new challenge just because you don't have a cert behind your name. Um, I always like to stay up and continuing the, the education portion of it is a huge factor for me. And so Salesforce was a great way for me to really lean into that because as we all know, Salesforce is always constantly evolving and growing and changing. And whether you stay up on certs or not, you have to understand the eco space that you're in and seeing how you can leverage that to continue to grow and challenge yourself. And I've always found that challenging yourself and your own expectations are generally always going to be higher than, you know, the person that is managing you. So I'm my own worst critic, and I'm sure that a lot of people on this podcast are as well. Um, so you're, you're within uh, like-minded individuals and really appreciate everybody being here. Um, one thing that I did want to cover is just kind of the, the, the practical tips along the way. We all know, you know, Salesforce has open sandboxes, um, but an avenue that I personally like to take um, is using our Salesforce community to continue to challenge myself. You know, technology has come a long way. So even if you're completing trailheads or individual courses, um, you can always find the answer if you want to versus, you know, really problem solving it for yourself. Um, and that's what actually led me to Talent Stackers. They have, you know, their own courses built out for career development uh, and really challenges you as an individual. One thing that I kind of want to start with is just talking about, you know, you as the core individual, building a strong personal brand. I'm personable on a podcast because I'm not standing in front of you all, 
but if I was in person, it might not be the same situation. I get a little bit nervous when I speak to large groups of people, but again, I understand our org and the orgs that I do consulting with incredibly well, and I take a lot of pride in that. I also really try to share my journey with other people, whether you've been in the eco space for a decade or more, or you know, you're hopping into your first sandbox or lean into that, share your journey. The Salesforce community, especially with Talent Stackers, such a great way to, you know, have your community support you um, and share those challenges and frustrations. Um, I've also found that bouncing ideas off of other individuals, they don't even have to be at the same level, but talking through it. Um, recently, we've had an org where we've, you know, had a lot of admins in that particular org. And, you know, I had to go down the route of a delegated admin setup versus, you know, just granting admin login access for every single user. That's something that I had done, you know, many, many years ago. But talking with uh, a fellow architect here in the Midwest, we are able to talk through it and find the best path to move forward. So really sharing where you at are at as an individual, sharing your learning experience, but also relying on your community. This also goes into creating a personal brand for yourself. Podcasts are fairly new for me. I think this is the third or fourth one that I've done total, but, um, it's allowed me to reach and touch a lot more individuals within the community and have a direct impact on their growth. So, you know, being a mentor or being a mentee um, has allowed me to continue to challenge myself and find things that I don't necessarily would consider within my scope. Um, but you start to learn new things and it jogs new memories, it brings new emotions up, and you find new things that you love and enjoy. Um, related to the community and just with that community outreach, I try to go onto the community and you know answer even just one question a day. Um, that not only helps challenge yourself as an individual, but you're also giving back to those that helped you when you first started. So, you know, creating that personal brand for me personally, it's about helping others, giving back to the community um, and finding a healthy work-life balance and sharing that story with other individuals can inspire somebody, even if you're not necessarily trying to, trying to do that. Um, so we looked at kind of our digital footprint with LinkedIn, Trailhead, Talent Stacker, um, but try to challenge yourself to set expectations. Like I said, I try to answer at least one question a day. Sometimes I get to one, I knock it out, my day's swamped and I move on. Other times I'm like, this was too easy and I keep going. And I'll have people reach out to me and thank me for the help. Or I've had people reach out to me and add me on LinkedIn and say, thank you for the help. I would love if we kind of continue this you know, working relationship and challenge each other. Um, and this has been something that has kind of become my personal brand. Um, I am a Salesforce uh, solutions architect, but I by no means know everything. And so my personal brand is trying to be a mentor for others, but always leaving that door open to getting that feedback uh, from individuals, just like everybody on the call here. Another thing that we can also develop talking about standing out is developing your um, your soft skills. So whether it's networking, I'm a big believer in giving back to your community, but a lot of people, you know, would love the idea, but they don't really know how to go about it. Um, I was very fortunate enough to have Brad, a part of the Talent Stacker community, uh, reach out to me and said, Hey, I love that you know you were able to break that income barrier. Will you join us on a podcast? I said yes without even thinking about it, and then I got really nervous. But 
the community outreach that I was able to uh, speak to and meet uh, really opened up another avenue for me. And um, I've made some great connections along the way. The other thing that we need to kind of remember when leveraging our community and network is to put your ego aside and don't think that you're going to solve all the problems at once. Even if you don't know the answer, it's okay to take a step back and say, I don't know, but let's work through it together. Let's create a roadmap. How do we get to that end solution with not necessarily saying, you know, I don't know the answer. I can't help you. Maybe somebody else can. Um, there's been a lot of uh, recent scenarios where I've been working with other individuals. Um, my most recent mentee, uh, he's from Ecuador. And so some of his personal challenges were how can he stand out as an individual when applying to U.S.-based roles? So for him, he felt that he was always kind of pushed to the bottom of the pile when people saw that he was based out of Ecuador. And so I worked with him to help him stand out and not highlight that he was necessarily from a different country, but put that foot forward on saying, hey, I've worked with Trevor. He's been my mentor for the last six months. These are the things that we've completed together. So it's okay to leverage those skills, even if you're a mentee, and highlight them on your resume. Um, I'm very, very excited that he actually got uh, a offer um, just under six figures, which is absolutely outstanding. Uh, he's always done consulting, but it it just it brought me so much joy to see his progress. But again, taking a step back, he came to me completely open and willing to do the work. So when we're talking about, you know, how to put yourself out there, try to check your ego at the door. You know, my nine to five, one of our mottos is low ego, high results. And that's something that I've also kind of encompassed into my personal brand. I love what I do. I'm incredibly passionate about it. But again, nobody knows everything. So you'll see the importance of communication a lot throughout these slide decks, but putting yourself out there, even if it's just one question a day, is really going to help you stand out as a Salesforce professional, but also going to challenge you as an individual. Um, also doing these things, you're not necessarily work always working towards an individual goal. So you might say, I wanna raise, how do I get there? But if you took a step back and said, how can I continue to challenge myself within my role? Going down that avenue would probably meet both the needs of possibly getting a raise and continuing to challenge yourself. So taking a step back and looking at what you're actually trying to achieve and find something that you're truly passionate about. Salesforce has grown exponentially you know, since I've been in the eco space and I truly feel like there's a spot for everybody. You just need to find your niche. The other thing that I would really, um, you know, suggest people do is invest in a program that is going to benefit you as an individual. Again, you might have a, it might have a goal of getting a raise or finding a different job or going from an admin to a developer or, or your next cert, whatever that may be, take a step back and look at it from a high level perspective and understand that investing in yourself is going to ultimately allow you to reach your goals from a business perspective as well. So investing in business and leadership courses, Talent Stacker has an out an amazing deck. Again, when I was first introduced to them, I didn't really know a ton of a ton about Talent Stacker, um, but they really take the ego out of it, um, and they're able to set themselves aside by really trying to help the individual grow. So 
find those courses, join the podcasts like this one, learn from others to help yourself grow. And when hopefully when we do these Q and A's and somebody speaks eventually other than myself, you know, I'll get just as much out of it as well. So I touched on it briefly on the last slide, but finding your niche, why specialization helps you stand out. Especially when you're getting into the Salesforce market, a Salesforce admin used to be a very, very defined scope. But now I personally feel that a Salesforce admin does a little bit of everything. You know, you're wearing multiple hats. You have a lot of feathers in your cap, whatever analogy you want to really look at. But finding and, ex finding and exploring a specific avenue that makes you excited about your day-to-day -day is going to roll through uh, into your current job, into your next job, and it's going to help you stand out as a candidate. Um, I do consulting on the sides from time to time. And every time I interview with a company and try to secure some business on the side, one of the things that I've always received the feedback about is, wow, you really love what you do. And I take a lot of pride in that. And again, that's talking about my personal brand. I love what I do. I get excited about it. You know, it might go over some people's, some people's heads, even your, you know, hiring manager that you might be interviewing with. You might speak to a lot more technical aspects that they understand, but they're impressed and see that passion through the way that you speak and the joy, the body language that you have. So find a niche that works for you that you're excited about. You don't necessarily have to know everything. So for me, it was just generally understanding how Salesforce worked and at the time, being a Salesforce admin fit that criteria. But then as we continued to grow as a, uh, a company within Salesforce, I started to realize, man, a lot of these other sales reps around me are struggling with some automation, whether it be, you know, quote development through CPQ or quick action tools or visual force pages. And you know, listening to my internal community with the company that I was at with at at the time allowed me to try to figure out how I can develop a solution that's going to help somebody. Um, and I'd like to touch on that a little bit more uh, because I just got off a call with one of my consulting groups and it was with their sales team. And one individual said, hey, I know I have a silly request, but I hate doing this every single day. And it was just talking about a lead conversion process. Now, this particular step in their process probably took the gentleman three to five seconds to complete. It's not the end of the world. But being able to look at it from a long-term perspective, it's taking him three to five seconds let's say 15, 20 times a day, 15, 20 times a day, times 52 weeks in a year, times five days a week. That can continue to grow. And it's a, you know, it's a joy when it comes to like the scope creep. So, you know, that small request, I'm going, con going to continue to work with their internal development team to help facilitate a quick action button that will allow him to automatically action or update these related records for him that, again, is going to make him happier, going to make him more productive as an individual. But from a company perspective, those three to five seconds is adding up to a couple hours over the course of a year. So when you're talking about finding your personal worth and standing out, using those small things to show the business value impact can have uh, a very large and re a, a very large and resounding impact when you're speaking to you know a specific manager that might understand the technical aspects 
you're speaking to a manager and you talk about revenue or generating um, ARR information, you know, they are always going to get excited and you're going to be able to give time back to an individual's desk. So that was just one example of how I was able to help somebody this week going to work with their development team. And I guarantee that that person's individual ask is going to have a ripple effect for under other individuals as well. Um, and so I have experience with apps. I have experience with, you know, developing, but finding something that you're interested in about that might be a small impact at a face level value. But again, try to extrapolate that and look at it from a larger perspective will again, help you stand out even more. So staying with current industry trends, we know that Salesforce is always constantly growing, evolving. They're adding new things, they're removing things. I think we saw you know, a bunch of posts this morning on LinkedIn about how you know, Salesforce just bought own backup, right? Things are always evolving and changing. And being aware of those things, even if you're taking, again, just one article a day that you're reading or one question that you're answering a day, the importance of staying up to date on current trends is going to help you stand out as an individual because it's going to let, you know, your peers or your manager or the person that you're interviewing with know that you're passionate about the role and that you're willing to invest your time and effort on staying up to date with those changes. So Salesforce is a you know outstanding CRM that allows us to play around in the sandboxes ahead of time. But if we think about the importance of staying up to date just in general with what we're trying to learn, I can almost guarantee that if you apply some of these tools, it's going to have an incredibly large business impact value to those around you. And it's going to challenge you uh, challenge you as an individual. And then again, bringing back the engaging with other communities, you know, engaging with the communities by answering one question a day, you're giving back to other people, you're allowing them to view the solution from a different perspective. Those types of things might take five, 10 minutes out of your day, but they're going to have value whether you see it right off the bat or down the road uh, my last podcast that i did with talent stacker i thought that it went pretty well but it was kind of a closed session with anita and brad and we released it a couple months later and i the amount of outreach that i've got from the community saying how did you do this where can i start and being able to give people a resource like talent stacker to go to and do the things that i've done um again sm small internal investments large returns at the end and it's okay to look at it from a selfish perspective if you if you need to but just if you try to give back to your community i guarantee that your community is going to give back to you whether it's you know monetary relationships, connections with different communities, try to put yourself out there. So I challenge people on this call to, you know, pick one thing that they're going to do once a day, once a week, you know, answer a question on the community, read an article that, you know, is related to the next Salesforce release, something small and get into a habit of doing that is going to have a ripple effect down the road. So I burned through that uh, slide deck way faster than I thought. <laughs> Everybody was silent, so I was uh, able to field this. So I'd like to share some kind of personal stories about how I've stood out with interviews, um, but also related to, um, uh, you know, yearly raises and how to kind of stand out in an individual within a company. Um, but before I do that, is there anything that I can answer from the questions that we've gone over thus far?
Yeah, Rick, I see that you raised your hand. Anita, can you unmute him? I'm unmuted, thanks. Uh, oh, perfect. Thank you, Trevor. So I've seen over and over again this, this idea that I completely understand the importance of and agree with about branding, but it's just something that has eluded me in terms of of execution uh and it because i i'm I, you know i have a couple certs i have one salesforce job under my belt as an as an admin and but i i have no idea what kind of brand that i want to establish for myself you know I'm, i you know i look at my 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 qualifications and my experience and i just see myself as as just an admin, you know, which is a regular old Salesforce admin, you know, nothing, nothing, you know, super special about it. You know, not that I'm not, not good at what I do, but, you know, what, how does one determine what kind of brand that they, you know, want to establish? Um, not to, that's a question that's easy to answer, obviously, but I appreciate any insight. Thanks. Yeah, absolutely. I, I appreciate you asking the question. And first, Rick, you are not just a basic admin you've taken the time out of your day to join this podcast and listen to me talk about my story and how to stand out as an individual. You are already putting yourself ahead of other individuals by taking the time to invest in yourself. So let's make that very clear. You're not a basic admin. You're already investing the time to grow as an individual. To answer your question about where to grow your brand personally, what I would try to do is look at your day-to-day and figure out where those struggles are and try to focus in on something that's reoccurring at least once a week and trying to find it can be an out-of-the-box solution or a custom solution but finding a solution for a reoccurring problem can lead you down an avenue that helps you develop a personal a personal um, a personal business model or a personal brand you know, so looking at your day to day, find something that's frustrating for you or frustrating for your users. You say you're working as an admin right now. I'm sure you get a lot of requests that might seem mundane. But again, talking about the example that I listed uh, out earlier takes five seconds. But you look at a company that has 100 users that's 100 hours back at the end of the year for the company. So trying to focus on a specific task will usually lead you down that avenue. And then share your story. You know, you don't have to have a ton of followers to be able to start creating your personal brand. I guarantee that posting your story, it's going to resonate with somebody. And that's going to continue to develop and grow as you become more comfortable with that. That was a great question. All right, we got the uh, official approval thumbs up from him. So that means I've done my job. I can go home, right? I need to, yep, okay. Well, technically I'm home already, so we're good. Uh, anybody else that, these are the questions I'd love to field. So anybody else uh, has anything? One brave soul. Uh, hey, Trevor, it's Kevin here. Question for you uh, regarding like trying to find the, the your niche. You, you talked about earlier that you kind of fell into a Salesforce role, even though you were trying to avoid a, a tech background or a tech career. Um, as for somebody who's entering or fairly new to the ecosystem, um, how how would you go about, like you said, solving, you know, finding a problem and, and going after that, but how would you go about finding that niche or how did you go about it? Yeah, uh, great question, Kevin. Uh, thank you. Um, yeah, so for me personally, it was understanding the core business problems. So in order to be a good admin, a good developer, you need to understand how the business functions. So I feel that for me personally, I always stand out as an individual because I understand the core business needs, but I also understand the technical aspects as well. 
So for somebody getting into their first role, they might be at a company that they're like I was in a sales role that might have, uh, you know, a sales force opening down the road. Road, you can take your day to day tasks that you're completing, and putting a use case or a proposal in front of your manager and saying, "Hey, I would love for this to happen. I've reached out to our team. They haven't been able to resolve this, but I've actually found a solution." Right. So. I want to keep it keep it a separate answer from Rick's um, about you know finding a business problem, but to be able to stand out is always going to continuing to challenge yourself and finding what you enjoy. And finding what you enjoy might be a challenge at the start because it it can be frustrating. Like I came with a little bit of you know old school HTML JavaScript coding background, Apex drove me insane because it like it's a little bit of everything, right? And I and I was very, very frustrated with it. But then I turned that frustration into energy to figure out, okay, I knew I understand the basic principles of Apex. How can I use it to my advantage? And I was able to write some general apex scripts that were essentially sql calls that allowed me to automate a lot of these uh sales reporting and dashboards that my company was having me do as many as rick's word a basic admin so i would try to challenge yourself with something that you are not necessarily comfortable in but that you've always wanted to know so I don't know if you have a technical background, but uh, another one that's really great, that's gaining popularity, like Fire CPQ. Um, I would say I'm above average in CPQ, but definitely not the best. Um, but it's a tool that is always going to be there. And it's a tool that I'm not, you know, 100% comfortable in but I can challenge myself and I can learn it. Uh, Travis, I see that you got the emoji hand up. Yeah, thank you for, um, this, this is really fantastic. Uh, so I have a few questions. It's, well, it sounds like, I guess the, the takeaway that I'm getting in terms of the branding part is don't think about how to sort of put yourself out in the, well, part of it is how do you put yourself out in the world and represent yourself based on what you're good at solving. But if you're, you don't have a lot of confidence in that area yet, then by going and, and you know, figuring out some way you can serve based on a recurring problem that's coming up for you, um, that, that you'll, that will lead you to, finding your value and confidence and sort of how you can put yourself out there. I guess maybe I'm just, just so I get that right. That would be part of my question. Um, the second part, I guess, is how do you know when you're ready to, um, I mean, and I know uh, Bradley answers this question, but I'm curious on your take, you know, we've gone through the talent, talent stacker experience project. We have some, let's say you've had some experience volunteering for a nonprofit and, you know, you've done that responsibly with the guidance of a mentor. Um, at one point, do you, what, what, when do you go and, you know, reach out and how do you, how do you reach out? It's um, in a way that's sort of, uh, yeah, basically, I mean, but how do you build, then go build a network that um, is, is there, is it, does it just kind of come out of answering questions or, you know, providing, you know, how, yeah. How, how do you actually go? And, you know, you're not, not at a point where you're going to get on a podcast or anything like that. Like what are, and I know maybe you spoke to this a little bit, but how, how do you get out there and then sort of without asking directly for a job, I guess, but sort of putting yourself out there to build the relationships that then, you know, lead to that possibility of say working for a consultancy or something like that. So you can continue to build your skills in a, in a paid environment. Like maybe, I guess if you couldn't, yeah, if you have any 
hopefully my question's clear enough. I'll, I'll stop yeah, there. Yeah, no, I, I, I got the gist uh, and I've been in your shoes. So I, I really appreciate, you know, the Q and a, um, yeah, I think that, you, you know, you're never going to be a hundred percent ready, a hundred percent confident all the time. I got nervous and I had a call with Anita yesterday, right? I, but I've been doing this for a while, but I still wanted to take the time to go through with her, ask her questions. I said, hey, I'm, you know, I'm not great at PowerPoint. Does this look okay? You know, it's okay not to be 100% confident, but having that passion and the joy come through and shown through your work is going to be more important to that end individual than them believing that you're ready to stand up and speak in front of a hundred people, right? So I would say that, yeah, the personally for me, um, I'm not a huge social media guy. I think LinkedIn is kind of my most venturous, uh, you know, thing uh, from that perspective. But I love being able to answer questions online. Um, and again, not being afraid to say that you don't know the answer. Just because you don't know the answer doesn't mean that you're not prepared or ready for the specific role. They might just throw you a zinger and, and that's okay. But it's better to you know be honest and upright about those situations versus just trying to kind of pull something out of thin air because more than likely you're going to see right through it. Um, but I've been in situations where I've had questions that have been asked about, you know, CPQ specifically, they wanted a CPQ specialist. I said, yeah, I've got some background in there. And they were asking me about some complex, you know, pricing rules associated with the feature. And, you know, it kind of all became like a, a mumble when they started listing off the request. And I probably could have thrown some general CPQ terms at them that made me sound more proficient than I am at CPQ. But I just said, you know, looking back at the core aspect of it, I said, hey, every every company is going to use CPQ differently. I think what I would need to do to answer that question is to be able to see what you're trying to solve for and work backwards from there. Um, so I think that that answers part of your question. Um, but the first part that I want to make sure is clear is you don't have to be 100% ready to put yourself out there. The hardest thing is just telling yourself to do it, and then you slowly become more comfortable. I don't think I'll ever be 100% comfortable speaking on a podcast. I guarantee that I have another one with Talent Stacker you know, in three weeks, and I promise that I will email Anita at least five times before that. Is this the right time? Am I talking about the right things? Am I speaking too much? What am I doing with my hands? It's like, you know, the Ron Burgundy thing. Where, what do I do, right? You know, it's okay. Like lean into that. I'm a, I'm a, I'm an oddball at times, but I lean into that. I kind of like not make fun of myself, but um, make it more comfortable uh, in a way that you're comfortable with. Um, so yeah, try to put yourself out there, even if it's baby steps, answering those questions, it can be even as easy as reading a new article. Nobody is going to know that you challenged yourself by reading a new article. And at the end of the article, you might have retained 10% of it. But again, that's 10% that you didn't know before. Yeah, I really like that question. Thank you, Travis. Anybody else? All right. Well, oh, there we go. Bobby? Yeah, I had a quick question. You mentioned about answering questions. You know, I don't feel like I'm confident enough to do that, but I was just curious where you're finding these questions that people have to then, um, you know, maybe expand your skills or share your knowledge. Um, yeah. Where are you finding these questions about Salesforce? Yeah, trail, uh, yeah, Trailhead Community. Trailhead Community, they have a question and answer bank. And I mean, they can be as simple as, hey, how do you add a new user? Somebody's just getting into the eco space. 
<clears throat> and again, you don't have to know the answer to answer the question. There's plenty of questions that I've seen that I don't know the answer, <clears throat> but I'll take, you know, 10, 15 minutes out of my day to find the answer and figure out at least a starting point for them. And that's helped them get to the ultimate solution. Um, another place that I see people ask questions a lot is on LinkedIn. They'll post something about how they're trying to, uh, you know, build a specific Apex class and a trigger associated with it. And they're getting back a null value or with CPQ, they're, you know, getting an error. Uh, one of their features isn't loading, right? You don't need to know all the answers. But if you are taking the time out of your day to problem solve those answers, um, not only are you helping the person that's asking the question, but again, you're continuing to challenge yourself. And if you do it enough, you know, people are going to start going to you for answers. And then all of a sudden you've started to develop that personal brand of, hey, maybe I'm ready to be a mentor. Or if you're not ready to be a mentor, hey, maybe I'm ready to reach out to a mentor program like Talent Stacker, right? I need additional help. Um, so I think that the, the direct answer would be uh, LinkedIn, uh, Salesforce community, <clears throat> but don't look at it from just the question itself and don't feel like you can't answer a question just because you don't know the answer. If we pulled up, you know, uh, the Salesforce community right now, we scrolled through questions. I might know like half of them, but if I took the time, I could probably answer the majority of them, but it would just take me kind of understanding the question, reading through it, problem solving. You know, we're all Google masters at this point, right? Trying to figure out the best way to solve the problem and using the tools that we have. Excellent, thank you. Yeah, absolutely. All right, um, so one thing that I kind of wanted to address and it spoke to Travis's question a little bit and I'll just kind of tell you about a, a experience that I had related to, you know, end of year reviews and, you know, trying to get to that next level up. Um, but as I'm speaking, hopefully uh, it'll resonate with somebody and we can kind of continue the conversation there. But I, you know, I thought back on what you had talked about Travis and I wanted to make sure that I addressed that as well. Um, the other thing is I do speak to this uh, in more detail in another podcast that I've done uh, with Talent Stacker. So um, I would definitely go onto their page um, and take a look at that one. It was what, two months ago maybe, um, but it's just talking about how to kind of level up um, and get to that next income stream. Um, but the specific story that I would like to talk about or the specific use case is how to present um, why I deserve a raise or why I deserve a promotion or why I'm applying to this next role. You know, if you go out there and just list, well, I did this, I did this, I did this, I did this, right? Anybody can do that. You're just listing out, you know, the tickets or whatever you've completed this year. but what I personally like to do is look at the larger projects that I've completed and understand the, the business value add that I've uh, implemented or pushed back into the company. Uh, one thing that uh, during that uh, interview or not interview process, the salary negotiation uh, that I was going through, you know, my manager had called out what I thought was a small business process and it was restructuring our stages for opportunities. And, you know, it was probably like a two week project. It, it was like a blip, right? But he asked me, well, why didn't you call that out? I said, well, it was two weeks. It wasn't that hard to do. Um, I just didn't think it was relevant to this conversation. And he then told me the, the, large business value aspect that they were able to get from it. They were to get, they were able to get uh, better reporting, uh, better usage for the specific, you know, sales users that were trying to push an opportunity to close one. So, you know, 
look at those things that you've completed, but really try to don't just look at it from a service level perspective and understand the business value that you're bringing. Um, and I like to bring up that story just because that specific project I would have never mentioned on, I would have never brought up when trying to ask for a raise, but then he specifically called it out. And then I kind of felt silly for not doing it because it was just, you know, such a large business value add. Um, and, you know, as an admin, as a developer, you know, sometimes you put on your blinders when it comes to the business value or understanding, you know, the sales process or whatever it is. Um, you know, something that I've learned from, um, you know, somebody that we recently onboarded within our company, um, he said, hey, you know, I'm going through this, all of this onboarding training, you know, when am I going to be able to sit down with one of our sales reps? And I just said, well, you know, I guess I, I guess we didn't really schedule time for that because you're going to be doing, you know, Salesforce administration work. So, you know, you won't really have, you know, direct uh, front end user experience. Um, you know, you won't be fielding those questions. And he said, well, you know, as my manager, is it okay if I set up time with it? And I said, yeah, absolutely. Can I understand why? And he said, because I just want to understand how the business functions, right? His question to me personally made him stand out even more than he did on the interview. Like it, it just, it, it, it warmed my heart that I'm like, yes, this was the right guy to hire. Right. So looking at the business value, even if you're not a sales guy or, you know, whatever it may be, um, understanding the value behind it um, can really help you level up those conversations and really push you aside especially when it comes to like uh, developer or, or, or architect jobs, you get, you get major blinders on when it comes down to talking about tech specific items um, and just knowing your audience. Uh, let's see here. So we have about 10 minutes left. I'd love to field more questions. If not, we can jump into some more random my stories um that kind of have helped me along the way um and again like even if you guys are just you know relating to one percent of it that's going to make me happy um just because you know i'm trying to do exactly what i'm telling you to do put yourself out there put yourself in uncomfortable situations speak to a group of people that refuse to ask questions right like i'm just kidding um, you know, it's, it's putting yourself out there. You don't have to know all the answers right away, but developing that personal brand is going to come along with everything that you're doing, working up to that point. All right. Um, I'll do the thing that I hate when my manager does. I might just like pick a random person. I hate when he does that. Somebody's got a question. Jonathan, I see you smiling a lot. You got a question for me? No, I just hearing your your story, uh, I I now like recall this from the podcast. Like I'm like, I've heard this before, and it's really cool hearing <laughs> it directly from your mouth. So that's what I'm smiling about. No, that's great. I, I really appreciate you listening. Yeah, that was uh that was my first one that I did with Talent Stacker and I was quite nervous for it, but after it was all done, it, it, it felt really good. And it was kind of like a, a bucket list item for me, that, but it was a bucket list item that I didn't even know that I wanted to do. Right. Um, yeah. So took a chance, put myself out there and, you know, now I've done a, you know, a handful of podcasts and I'm really enjoying it. Trevor, I have a question that, takes us back one subject slightly. So I hope that's okay. Um, one of the Absolutely. things that I'm struggling with uh, is balancing time spent on building that personal brand and spending time on LinkedIn and, um, you know, striking up conversations or commenting on things or trying to answer questions with 
everything else that I'm trying to learn or do. <laughs> and I, I imagine that I'm not alone in trying to find that um, balance. And I just wonder, you know, for you, how, ha what is your strategy for that? Has it evolved from, you know, maybe when you were starting out earlier in the yoga ecosystem and had to put some more serious brain power to actually coming up with um, quality content or responses or, you know, well thought solutions versus now where, you know, you are uh, quite a bit more experienced and, and can maybe pop off some answers in 10 minutes. I would love to get to that point. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I, I think I think that's great. Yeah, I think that, um, you know, when I first started in the eco space, it was, I wish I had taken the chance to find a mentor. Right. But I ended up getting a mentor through work, but it was never intended that way. It was just somebody that was willing to take a chance on me. Right. Mm -hmm. They understood that I understood, you know, what a CRM was. Um, and so I would say for somebody starting out, uh, you can put yourself out there by finding a mentor. There are plenty of programs out there. I've had an amazing experience with Talent Stacker. I, I don't remember offhand how many mentees I've had, but I think all of them except one have landed their first Salesforce role. Um, one of them, we just didn't, we just didn't align on some things and, and that's okay. Yeah. Um, but I think, yeah, finding a mentor is a great way to put yourself out there, whether you've been in it for a week or been in it for a decade. Like I still have a group of architects that I meet with once a quarter. And sometimes for that hour, we just talk about life stuff. And then the life stuff leads us into like more complex problems that we're having within the business. Um, but to... But to answer your question about kind of structuring that, I would almost call it like a, a work-life balance or like work-life plus something, right? Um, setting those internal expectations and starting small, right? The one question for me is sometimes very easy and I'll knock out a bunch of them right away. But I started small by saying, I'm going to answer one question and I would have to scroll through pages to find a question that I felt comfortable answering, right? Um, mm. And as I continued to answer more questions, I didn't have to scroll as far. And then I just started telling myself, okay, I'm not gonna scroll. I'm just gonna pick the first one I see and I'll figure it out, right? Um, and so setting those, lower lower your expectations for what you're trying to invest right away. Because if you um, overpromise and underdeliver for yourself, you, it's like a kick in the gut, right? You're like, man, like I tried, this didn't work. Some people give up at that point. But if you set it low as a, I'm going to read one article a week, right? I'm going to join one podcast and not speak at all. That's just one thing that you did. And you'll start gaining confidence in ways that you didn't think you could have, right? I am by no means a great public speaker, but I've really found joy in it through doing these podcasts. Um, so, you know, for me, I didn't answer any questions today. I obsessed over this, you know, not great uh, PowerPoint. Uh, and I put myself out there and I did it. And that was my goal for the week, right? So well, from an objective so, so. perspective, it was a it was not a bad PowerPoint. It was a great PowerPoint, and your presentation has been on point. So <laughs> I love to hear it. Thank you, yeah. thank you. Everybody else, be quiet. I'm just going to end it now. I got my you know gratification, so we're good. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah, so that's what I would I would say. Set set those expectations low, uh, because if you uh, you know over deliver you're just gonna you know boost your ego but just setting those expectations small so like for you personally i would i would actually just challenge everybody on this call to listen to one more talent stacker podcast right jonathan said that he listened to mine which is awesome so i'm objective i'm telling you to listen to mine i think it's a good one um 
But if you don't want to listen to a podcast, listen to a podcast, read an article or answer a question. Just pick one of them. You got two weeks. Anybody can do that, right? You can do it in the car. You can do it over lunch. Just pick one of those three things. And I guarantee that once you do one of those things, you're going to feel great about yourself. Um, and it's going to evolve into the larger things. All right. Um, I know we're at two minutes. Um, so again, I hope you guys realize that I'm a big believer in giving back to the community. Um, I have my LinkedIn on here. It's just my first dash last name. Um, I Anybody that messages me, even recruiters, I'll always just say hi. Because like, again, that's I need, that's what I need to do to set those expectations for myself. So if you do have questions, I promise that I will eventually get to you and I will answer them the best I can. And if I say hi, just know that I will, I will come back and I will answer your question. Um, but yeah, setting those low expectations, putting yourself out there. Um, and then the last thing that I'd like to say is that um, the podcast that's coming up on the 27th would love if everybody would join that. And so again, holding you guys accountable if you don't answer a question or you don't read an article, I'll expect to see you on the 27th. Thank you so much, Trevor. And thank you everyone for joining us today on a Friday afternoon. Appreciate it. Have a good weekend, everyone. Thank you.